Hello, Heritage, and how are we going to do church this coming Sunday, May 24th? Before I get into those logistical details where I want to give you an overview of what it will look like, first I would like to remind you to look at the video from last Wednesday at watchhbcylinsford.com or on Facebook where I laid out the philosophy and the position of our church for how we go about reopening in a way that is glorifying to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me remind you that these times are going to require us to be flexible. It is going to be terribly inconvenient at times and we are going to have to continually die to self. But may we be obedient and may Jesus Christ receive all the glory. As we look at this coming Sunday, first let's pray and ask his blessing. Father, we do ask your blessing. Jesus, we are so thankful that you promised that nothing will stop the forward march of your church, that indeed hell itself, the gates, will not withstand uh, the forward movement of the gospel. Holy Spirit, bind us together, keep us unified, and may we gather together for the glory of Christ this coming Sunday. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In these interesting times with the regulations and mandates by the government and just good prudence, having the services indoors vastly reduces our capacity in order to maintain social distancing and such. So what we have decided to do this coming Sunday is at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. this coming Sunday, May 24th, we're going to be having an outdoor services in our lower parking lot. One service outdoor by being outdoor vastly reduces the communicability of COVID-19 and allows more families and individuals to gather. By doing this outdoor in our lower parking lot with that nice gentle slope with the stage at the bottom, sound system, we'll be able to maintain adequate spacing as well as be able to accommodate well over 200 family units. And this allows, again, for safety precaution, but also maintain the gathering of the people of God. Now, I'm going to look at my notes. So if you see my eyes drop, that's where I'm looking because I want to make sure that I get this accurate and that you have a good picture of what this is going to look like. First of all, we are going to be coming in through the north portico, the north parking lot, excuse me. That is the parking lot with that big portico, the big brick covering that you can drive under. It is the parking lot that is facing Aldi's. You're going to come in through that parking lot. You're going to be met by greeters there who will then check you in and then direct you around behind the church where you're going to park down by the basketball courts. Now, let me give you your first major action point. I said check you in. Yes, we need you to sign up. You can click on the link of this post. You can go to watchhbclinchburg.com. Please make sure that you sign up for church so that we know how many people are coming, how many people to expect, and so that we can make accommodating preparations to keep people safe, humanly speaking, but also be able to bring in people to worship the Lord. We need you to sign up, and this also helps us accommodate any visitors who may come. If you do not sign up, we will have you park in a little bit of a holding area until we can ensure that the capacity can handle the additional people we didn't expect. So this is very important. Sign up today, tomorrow, ASAP. Let us know how many people are coming. Follow the instructions. Make sure that you sign up. So you'll be met from the north parking lot by greeters. You'll be sent around behind the church, parked by the basketball courts, and you'll be met by further greeters, hospitality team, and they'll be wearing nice bright shirts so you'll be able to see them, and they will show you where you are to sit. Much like an outdoor concert or sports venue, uh, you will have assigned seating. We're going to seat people in our parking lot spaces, and, and we're going to stagger it so that we can maintain that six-foot social distancing and uh, to make sure that we are taking those precautions by, laid out by the governor and by our state authorities. So as we come, uh, you will be checked off. Uh, we'll be able to assign you that seating. Please note, this is not drive-in church. Many churches have been doing that, where you drive in with your car, you park. This is not drive-in church. This is a good old-fashioned outdoor lawn church. Not a lawn service like mowing your lawn, but sitting on the lawn or sitting in our parking lot while we worship outdoors, be able to sing and hear the preaching of God's Word. In preparation for this, because it's 11 o'clock and we're entering the beginning of the summer months here, we do recognize that heat will start to get a little bit high. So in preparation for this, please make sure that you have water bottles. Make sure that you bring lawn chairs or a blanket to sit on. 
Uh, make sure you wear a hat, sunglasses, dress comfortably but modestly. So this is casual but modest. Please refrain um, from using umbrellas or other pop-up shade because that may block the people's view from, that are sitting behind you. Now, as we go further into the weeks, if this format works well and weather permitting, then we will try and see about moving the service time earlier. But we're going to play that week by week because the setup for these services is substantial. Now, you said, wait, weather permitting. Yes, if there is rain in the forecast and it looks like it's going to be a significant event, uh, we will let you know. But this is why it's so important for you to sign up because this allows for us to email, text you directly with what the rain plan will be that will move us indoors. And that will, again, vastly reduce our capacity and have to stagger multiple services. So we need to know who's coming so we can plan accordingly. And in order to sit outside, uh, come prepared for that. Please note that if you do have difficulty walking or need assistance, uh, just keep in mind this is a walk from your car and a downhill grade outside. So please keep that in mind. And you say, well, maybe I'm, I can't come then, or I'm in a vulnerable population, or maybe I just don't feel comfortable coming out yet into greater society. Don't worry. We're going to continue our online live streaming so you can avail yourself of that technology and be able to stay tuned with God's people as we worship. So again, you have the freedom to do that as needed. We'll continue the live stream services, but we are looking forward to taking this first step, God willing, back to normalcy as a church. We do ask that you minimize the number of cars that you bring. So if you are coming with a family, don't every teenager drive their own car. Carpool. Minimize your vehicular footprint on campus. Please also recognize that bathrooms will be limited. We will have some down by the gym. But please prepare for that because we are trying to minimize how many people are going inside and indoors. Families with children, you are of course welcome. But parents, please make sure that your kids are with you at all times. We would like to maintain the six foot social distancing. Please make sure that they are with you, that they are respectful of those around so that we can all enjoy this time of worship together. Social distancing, six feet, even as you fellowship with one another, please be conscientious of that uh, social distancing measure. Now, many people are asking, what about masks? Oh my, isn't it interesting how masks have become kind of the, the sensitive issue of our times? To wear a mask or to not wear a mask? Some stores you go in, it seems like nobody is, while others, it seems like everybody is wearing a mask. So what are we going to do? The governor's recommendation is that we all strongly consider to wear a mask. Now, this is primarily for indoor services. This is an outdoor service, but we do encourage you to consider wearing a mask. We are not mandating it. Therefore, please know there will be people that are wearing masks and others that are not wearing masks. So if you come and you choose to wear a mask, great. If you do not, great. But here's what I'm asking you to do. Do not judge one another by whether or not you wear a mask or do not or wear a mask. We encourage you to consider it to uh, part of the governor's guidelines. Please note that the staff and the pastors, while, while seating people and directing people, because we'll be working in a little bit of closer proximity with you, we will be wearing masks. Though many of the staff members will probably take them off once the actual worship service begins. So just keep that in mind. If it's uncomfortable for you coming without wearing a mask, just know that there will be people uh, of both persuasions in this group. And I do know that we have many different convictions going on about what we should do, what we shouldn't do. We're trying to take the high road to honor the name of Christ, to honor our governing authorities. But please, let's give grace to one another during these interesting times as we all flesh out our convictions in different ways. Once again, if you're in a vulnerable category or you feel uncomfortable coming out, uh, please avail yourself of the online service. So what do I need you to do? What do we need you to do? The elders, the deacons, the, the leadership, the staff here at Heritage, we need you to sign up. Again, click on the link on this video or you can go to watchhbclinchburg.com. Sign up and let us know that you're coming. Also, please arrive early. You can imagine if we have 100 cars show up right at 1055, it's going to back up and significantly delay everything. So sign up ahead of time this week. 
do it as early as possible, and then plan to arrive a good 20 to 30 minutes early, please, so that we can seat people and get everybody ready for the service to begin at what time? At 11 o'clock. So sign up, show up early, you'll be met with a greeter, and come ready to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking forward to this time. It's so important for the people of God to gather. Thank God for the technology. We've been able to do this even via distance. But the people of God are a single body in the Holy Spirit. And that there is great joy and power and accountability and growth that happens in the context of the one another's of Scripture being together and worshiping together. So we make that a priority but we're also being wise and we're also taking into account our social realities and dynamics that are going on around us. So as we pray about Sunday and the upcoming weeks, I do ask that you pray specifically for good weather, that God would grant us low heat, clear skies or cloudy skies to give us that shade. Let's pray in these services week by week and please be flexible week by week as we need to adjust. I am personally very excited about this direction and how God is leading and the opportunities that we have as a church to begin to regather and go into this phased reopening of what ministry will look like in the future. One last thing before I sign off. Many of you have been emailing and asking about the Lunch with Nathan devotionals that we've been doing during the week. As we have gone into a phased reopening of church, I am shifting those devotionals to Wednesdays only. So once a week, Wednesdays at noon, we're studying through the book of Ephesians. And tomorrow we're going to be looking at the power of words, the destructive nature of anger, and how we are to put off the old self, put on the new self in very practical ways. With this quarantine, I think all of us have been tested in these respects. And I think this is a timely word from God's word to challenge us, to encourage us, to live a life worthy of what we have been given in Christ. As we look forward to Sunday, and would you join me tomorrow? First, let us pray and seek his guidance, his blessing, and his protection. Jesus, we do pray for those things. And Lord, I pray that you would give us clarity, pray that you would give us wisdom, that you would protect your church as you said you would. May we trust in your goodness and in your grace. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you tomorrow, Wednesday, and see you on Sunday, God willing, whether in person or continually via the live stream. May we gather as God's people and lift high the name of Christ.